Okay. Figured I had a little bit of time tonight. I may as well get another map review out of the way. Just to be closer to covering pretty much all of them. So. Oh, shoot. I'm not in tournament mode. Um, we'll restart here. There we go. Are cheats still on? They are. Perfect. So, um, the way I've been doing this has been starting off with the callouts, then the rollout, the mid fight, and then from there, I cover all the stuff that happens during a round instead of just the start. Going from coast to coast with every hold and every like transition between the holds. Okay, so starting with callouts. We are on the last point here. This region is kind of just called like top left or top right, depending on if you're attacking or defending. And then same for the shutters, either right and left or left and right. You of course have the point, you have the ring, which is a place that soldiers will like to be on. Um, this little balcony over here gets called launch pad. Um, this door is called main. This little secret area back here is called secret. Um, of course, behind the point is called behind the point. And then under the point is called water, which I guess that's a hiding spot. You could call that pipes. Um, water connects to river, which is this whole region, which again connects into last. And of course, there's a shutter, so we'll just call that a shutter. And actually, the room that uh, the shutter connects to sometimes gets called lockers because of this. Uh, but yeah, launch pad and shutter both connect to lobby. Um, probably, yeah, I never really see lobby get called like upper and lower. Uh, usually just lobby, which again connects to main. And then this region down here is actually not lobby. This is called wood. Um, yeah. And then of course river connects to lobby through I, I like to call this stairs actually and this is a spot that like people will be lingering at sometimes um so yeah river connecting to lobby this is all still river and then it starts uh becoming bats this area would be called bats um this spot it's a spot that uh, soldiers will play um to spam out players approaching river when they're holding two um, I've heard it called Headshot. I've heard it named after a specific player. I don't know if it was Mela. It was some player's alias was the callout. But, uh, yeah, that is a callout soldiers would like to be at. Of course, um, Shutter, again, uh, will connect Lobby into Second, which is this point. Uh, this whole region, this entire area is called Big Door. And then the part, or the Shutter that connects to Wood... From big door is called baby door okay so you have the point you have like behind the point um, you have you know on top of the point uh this little area over here does not really have a good name that i know of uh, i'm sure you could come up with something but uh, oftentimes if someone is like on top of the point um then yeah it's like not too hard to, to spot them i guess um in any case, you have the rock. This is a place that uh, soldiers will bomb to to make space. Or just like somewhere that people could be like hiding out behind. Um, and then over here is choke. So, big door and choke both connect to mid, which we're at here. And actually, there's a third little like pseudo connection of this region called drop down, which connects to mid under the point, which is what that whole area under the point on either side is called. And then you have the point itself. On top of the point sometimes gets called nipple, actually, uh, oddly enough. And what else? Give me one second, actually. Let me make sure this is functional. 
Um, in any case, you have choke connecting to mid, and then you have these two little walk-up areas. Um, I guess the whole kind of region that isn't under the point, but on the ground. I just call it like the floor, um, but you can call it whatever you want. But there's these two little tunnels that you can walk up from the floor to get to uh, choke. I didn't know you could knock this around. Um, and it's easy to confuse the two. The way I understand it, the smaller one here, which connects to the big door, well, they both connect to a big door side of things, but uh, the smaller one is called banana, and then the larger one over here is called elbow. And elbow actually has like a couple hiding spots in it that uh, you should be aware of if you're pushing choke in the mid. Okay, and what else? Um, you have some hiding spots up here. You could call this the light or lamp. Um, and then these windowsills people can stand on, so it might be worth uh, having a call out for them. In any case, I think, and yeah, any forward spawn, there's one on mid, and then there's one on second. Any forward spawn is just a forward. Uh, but I think that's it for the callouts. Um, I have a fool in my chat right now. Uh, in any case, yeah, I think that's the callout. So let us talk about the rollout and talk about the mid fight. So, as a combo, um, the explosive specific rollout for demo, uh, we'll actually do demo last because it's the most different depending on your mid plan. Um, we'll start with the combo. So the combo is going to come out right spawn, walk down here through main, and you're going to go through wood into big door. And then from big door, you are tasked with a decision of which side you want to walk up. So most of the time, the default play is to walk up the left side, up your side, because this is your choke, and then play the mid from here. Um, but as a mix-up option or a very aggressive option, if you want to be bombing them fast, um, maybe catch them by surprise, something to that effect, then you might want to walk up their banana and then fight their side, in which case you'd be looking to bomb their demo, who is probably choke, um, and just establish positioning here and, you know, stuff them in elbow and, you know, do good things with your high ground and your spam and hope to end the mid quickly. So that's the decision you're tasked with. Uh, as a roamer, uh, of course, the, the scouts, medic, and pocket soldier are going to do the same thing every time and end up in big door. Uh, as a roamer, you also tend to roll out big door and you can hit like a skip jump to like land down here for early spam or like try and go up dropped. I mean, you have like all sorts of soldier plays and then the demo rollout you actually have to make the decision pretty early of what side you're going to play because if you're playing their side like the aggressive mid then you want to roll out main and just walk with your team and it's a pretty straightforward rollout first stick you're probably going to want to go on the demo um and it's just a lot of walking the standard choke rollout however I do say choke uh, if you're playing your side the standard rollout is going to be choke in which case you want to land on launch pad and jump over to choke and then your first sticky could be some nice reliable damage in big door because the other team is going to be showing up there um, so yeah you should as a team have a good idea of what side you want to play early on to the rollout so your demo knows which you know which area to roll out to but uh, that is the rollout. So let's talk about the mid fight. Um, let's talk about their side first uh, because it is much simpler. Um, usually you're looking to be bombing your soldiers and that's a nice little wall to high bomb off of uh, from big door. Bomb their soldiers up uh, onto the other team's side pretty much immediately and you do want to be walking up, getting nice spam, getting that good positioning uh, established pretty early. Keep in mind this is a pretty fast mid. It's going to be over uh, as soon as it starts. So, um, 
as a demo and especially a medic, you do have to be mindful because the other soldiers, their play when you are playing their side is to be bombing you um, pretty much immediately as well. So you don't want to just commit to this little corner where you can't see where the soldiers are bombing at until you have a decent idea of what they're doing. This applies more so to medic. You just do not want to be caught in that little corridor when soldiers are landing. But uh, even as a demo, you might want to be mindful of that and walk up to this position and span their demo out. Uh, things of that nature. Uh, but yeah, it's really just all about getting this positioning, getting that spam, focusing picks. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward plan. Uh, as far as soldier bombs initially, um, just the high bomb here is pretty solid, but uh, I guess you don't have to. You could have like Ah, a drop down would be crazy. You, If you have like a roamer that's able to skip down here, then you can like jump from anywhere under point, I suppose, or even maybe commit drop down. But uh, yeah, pretty straightforward stuff for the their side mid. But for the more standard your side mid, um, you have, again, a lot of options. So um, as far as positioning goes, so you do want your medic walking up elbow, and actually pocket scout tends to um, hold the outside just to make sure a fast soldier bomb is not like landing in this window or something, or landing behind to kill the medic in elbow. So they're watching out for that, and they can jump over and double jump up here to meet up with their medic. Um, flank scout could walk with the combo up uh, your side or alternatively can challenge the other team's demo quite early by either double jumping up to the fence and then double jumping towards them or just walking up elbow. Um, that is a great tool if their demo is getting very aggressive from choke and getting a lot of really good spam on the walk up because uh, that is something to look out for is just like sticky or even like lock in particular spam on this walk up can be pretty nasty. So sending a flank scout at their demo to pressure them is going to do a lot to make it so uh, your walk up's a lot better. Um, and there's going to be some mids where you might just get a pick out of that. Um, just if their demo's not prepared for it and your flank scout's able to just kind of W and get the kill. That won't happen all the time. And you can like get that initial spam and then back up across point or like drop down and take a fight with like a player underneath or something. But uh, you have options. As far as a soldier positioning goes um roamer under point i already mentioned um i mean just a soldier under point can be quite nice because you have the option of going drop down you can take like pretty isolated fights under the point as well um so that's something to look out for and of course like it is somewhere that you can just bomb from without uh, too much notice um so yeah something to consider or just like an immediate bomb this is a mid where bombing pretty early is nice. Um, if you can be aiming to bomb as their med is like crossing elbow uh, or like just finish the cross, um, that can be quite good. It can be difficult to handle. Um, as far as pocket positioning, you could be playing on the floor with like your rumor doing uh, like soldier coordination stuff. Like you can mix it up. Uh, I'd say as far as like mid plans go, soldiers have like the most diverse plans. Um, a demo might position themselves like differently, but they kind of do the same thing or like shoot the same. It's very reactive, I guess. You're just shooting it like based on their positioning. Whereas like a soldier, you might play a completely different mid, uh, mid to mid, and you don't want to just get stale with it. But a uh, soldier on like this back high ground, um, playing spam or playing to bomb can be nice. I suppose this is uh, something you can bomb off of. My soldier expertise is not uh, perfect, so I don't have, like, excellent advice. But, uh, yeah. As far as drop-down goes, drop-down is very powerful. Um, going up the other team's drop-down. Because it's usually not a good use of resources to have someone watch this. So, uh, generally, I think... Um, as far as stopping drop-down from being a problem, first and foremost actual spotting if you have someone like on the floor that can spot it um especially like playing underneath your side uh then no one's going to be able to go up it and if they do they're going to take some spam doing it and they're going to like half well more than half of the benefit of drop down is like it's unexpected but if they know you're coming then you're just going to be way less effective 
Um, also, as I mentioned with those fast bombs, if you are like double bombing pretty early on and like committing a cross point, um, that guy drop down might not be able to do as much because they just don't have time to go for that play by the time you're actually doing your commit. Um, so those are the two main ways to prevent uh, a soldier from exploiting your drop down. Um, what else? Yeah, during a commit as like a demo or a combo, you can totally you know, peek the other side of point. And depending on the space, even like cross point, but uh, all you're looking for is like getting uh, aggressive with your soldier bombs, getting that good spam in, and uh, yeah, hopefully getting kills and doing good things with your aggression so that you can win the mid. Um, what else? We talked about positioning for pretty much all the players. I mean, med, you're going to just be like a step back from your demo and scout, just healing players, looking out for bombs, normal medic stuff. Uh, positioning is not too crazy. Uh, a big thing for medic, though, is don't just walk up elbow at the start you should be looking at either an immediate high bomb or spam that's coming in um, if there's just a sticky that gets placed here you, you might want a scout to just shoot that before you actually cross uh, because you don't want to be taking like an 80 damage immediately uh, there is one like little nice thing which is when your demo rolls out choke they do take this pack but it usually respawns by the time you walk up so your medic might have access to it um, if they take some spam on the walk up um yes yeah, so we talked about fast bombs the pacing uh, you can play as slow as you want you just have to watch out about drop down um, and you, of course, have to watch out about their bombs. Uh, this is a map where the double bomb can just get a lot of space and a lot of value. So it's usually nice to be the first one to do the double bomb, but uh, you can play it however you want, try different things. But with that, I think that's pretty much the mid explained. Um... I didn't really talk about pocket scout outside of like the rollout. Uh, of course, being on height is important. Shooting bombers is important. Um, it's it's just normal pocket scout stuff, honestly. Um, nothing too crazy. Just play high ground and shoot soldiers. Uh, shoot players that like get on your demo, and you should be you should be doing well. So with that, let us return to last, and we're gonna go coast to coast here, talking about every point. So, we're going to start with Disad last, um, with other team has Uber, and what you want on Disad last, you want a sentry gun. Anytime you're on last and you have time to build a gun, build a gun. Um, for Disad, so the positioning of a sentry gun is going to depend on the state of Ubers. You either have like an evens gun set up or a disad gun. Disad gun is usually constructed like outside of spawn. So either on the left side there or like on the right side here. Um, right side might be a little... It's hard to say. They're, they're both solid options. Um, could talk about the trade-offs when I talk about other off-classes. But uh, basically what you're looking for is just getting that gun up as soon as possible because uh, it's it's valuable. And actually, if you have time to move your gun on disad, then you can totally move it like here or here are some options I see. But usually just like outside of spawn door is totally fine. Um, you're just trying to get that up as fast as possible. The only time you don't want to be building a gun is if you just will not get it constructed in time. Like, if your gun won't even be, like, built, or maybe maybe even if it's level 1, it's, like, worth building anyway. I'm not too sure. But uh, if the push is going to be absolutely imminent and you, you won't have time for a gun, then you're better off just locking heavy straight away. But in all other cases, you want to build that gun, and then only after it goes down, you could either switch back to scout or play heavy. Uh, I should mention, this is a scout that is switching off. Um, on some maps, uh, on some maps it might not matter so much, but on Gully Watch you really want your soldiers alive on last. Okay, so, always have your sentry gun up, wherever it may be. Now, other off-classes, I already talked about heavy, and we're going to talk about pyro, because pyro is viable on this last, uh, on disad. And there's two, like, modes you can have for pyro. 
And you know what? I can actually just switch to Pyro to uh, demonstrate, but not on this weapon. This is not a weapon you'd want to be using. Backburner? Probably not. You know what? Rainblower. Lovely. <laughs> okay, so uh, Pyro has like two modes, basically. You have the first, which is um, deny the Uber mode, where you literally just air blast the doorway that they're trying to enter through to keep the Uber out of your last. Uh, this is most of the time something you will be dying for, um, which is not good because all an Uber is looking for is like positioning and any kills. Uh, but if you can, if you're feeding them that one kill that they want, but denying all positioning in the process, then it's it will be worth it. Um, and if you do have the detonator, so the, the main two doors that teams are going to use through are going to be river or shutter. If you have the detonator and you have good spotting from your teammates, let's say there's like a soldier spotting from a launch pad that can identify if they're in lobby or not, then you could at a moment's notice like, oh, they're in lobby. Okay, I can like detonator jump over here and be watching this door when I was just river. Just to, just so it's less of a gamble, like you can actually rotate between the doors. So detonator is nice for that. Um, just so you're not like caught out. Uh, another little tip as well for the pyro is if you can let one player through, whether that be a bombing demo or a scout, and then air blast the remaining members of the combo out. And what that does is makes it so that if this player does not turn around and prioritize the pyro, or if it's a demo that just bombed too deep, uh, maybe trying to take out a sentry gun or something, they will not get reflashed and they might die. So even if you die, suddenly it's like a trade and it's much better for your guy, for your team. So another thing, if you can pull it off, then uh, let one person through but deny the rest. But uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. You're just air blast fodder trying to uh, deny them from the doorway. So, the other mode Pyro has, and this is something that you won't be dying for. Why is this a shutter on the window? Whatever. <laughs> um, this is a mode you won't want to be dying on. This is Gun Pyro. And this usually works best if the gun is right-sided, like right here. And your entire job is to air blast away the spam. Um, that's all you exist for and just try and keep that gun up as long as possible, probably with the NG behind, tanking the gun a little bit. Um, and neither you nor the NG want to be dying for this. It's purely a matter of wasting time. Um, if you can keep the gun up the whole time, that's fantastic, but that's not often going to be the case. So know when to call it off. Uh, just play your life, make sure you're living. But uh, yeah, it can be pretty valuable to... Uh, man, this rainblower is hilarious. Uh, it can be pretty valuable to... Uh, to play Gun Pyro, another stalling measure using the Air Blast. Um, and that's where I may as well talk about uh, the benefits of the different guns at this point. So this gun is better to play Gun Pyro. It is harder to spam as well for a team playing uh, top right. Um, but it also is like less, well, it's going to keep out the rest of the team from entering the left side, which is usually where they want to enter. So it's very valuable for that. But it doesn't really directly um, affect the combo so much. It really lets them establish this top right positioning, um, which is a downside for sure, versus like a gun here is going to be much easier to take out, uh, harder to play gun pyro with. But it really uh, makes sure that they cannot stand this top left positioning, which is where they want to be standing, um, until it gets taken out. So this, so a gun here commands way more attention, but will probably go down faster, whereas a gun here is going to stay up longer, but uh, it at least doesn't affect the combo as much as the rest of the team. I think right side is usually better, but you can totally mix it up. It's not uh, super substantial. Um, okay, what else? As far as other off classes, sniper like in the spawn to switch off seems kind of bad, honestly. Just having a scout is, or just like honestly, gun pyro with a scout on pyro, a scout on engineer just kind of seems like the hold you should be doing. Um, what else? There were some fireworks that just shook my apartment. Uh, in any case, let's talk about the uh, rest of the positioning. 
uh, since we covered the off classes. So Medic is going to be pretty much playing here. And positioning here does matter a lot because if you're here, you are caught to an Uber. If you're here, you are not. So you want to be playing somewhere where you can just immediately duck into spawn. Um, and then whoever is with you would be nice to heal and like build Uber. Maybe you even get. Um, usually it's going to be... It could be a scout if uh, you're not playing Gun Pyro and just playing the Sentry. It could be a Pocket Soldier as well, since Pocket Soldier, I think, does rotate through... Uh, well, can rotate through spawn. And I'd say if you are playing Gun Pyro, um, you might want to just have your heals with them already, just to tank these guys. Uh, could be a thought there. Um, and you might have your demo. So let's talk about demo next, actually. So as a demo, if it's disad, you want to have traps point. There's multiple ways to do this. And if you actually have time to set up, these guys can be a little tricky, harder to see. Someone might see sticks on the front and think it's safe back here, or they might be coming from behind water and think it's safe, only to get dead on and die. But you want to have traps on the point. Um, if it's disad, just it's what you need. <laughs> And so you can play with your medic to lead or to, to kite through spawn. And this is a nice big window where you can spot point. So if I'm actually playing spawn, I tend to put all eight stickies on the point. Um, you don't have to. I, I recommend like at least five. Um, just make it threatening so that they can't just cap immediately. But uh, this window serves two benefits. First and foremost, you can spot the point. You can spot um, if someone's trying to cap to dead on them. But you can also spot the other team's positioning because top left or top right, depending on if you're attacking or defending, um, this positioning is vital for winning a fight on this last. Uh, basically, every Uber you take has the goal of ending in this positioning and locking out the other team's spawn so that they're forced to rotate out in this tiny little corridor where they can get bombed, they can get spammed by everything, and they all die. Um, likewise, there, you if the other team's playing correctly, you won't be able to come back out top left after kiting, but sometimes they drop down to the middle to try and like play point or something, in which case you absolutely want to get out top left and establish top left positioning. Like This is where you... This is the best positioning to be holding, basically. Um, so this 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 high ground positioning is very important, really important to establish. So you can spot during your kite which side you get to come out through this window. So good information there. Um, but if it's most of the time and their demo actually adequately locks down shutter and just like they, they chill top left, then you're going to have to come out right side, which sucks, but uh, you can't just sit and spawn. And you have to play the point. Uh, the other option demo has is playing in water. So, of course, disad, you want to have traps on the point anyway. Um, and the way I like to do it if I'm playing water, I definitely want to have myself trapped off from river just so that a player can't get, uh, they can't just walk down. Um, you can sometimes spam river, but it's definitely risky because a lot of the time, especially if they're like close river, like here, then they might just take their Uber into you. And getting the kill on the demo is pretty good for them. Um, so you don't want to just give them that. But your whole job here is to make it so they can't pressure the point from behind. Um, and yeah, the trade-off, of course, is that uh, you are not up top, like spamming and helping your team. You are very much baiting. But water control is quite important, so it, it's definitely valuable. Um, and yeah, you have to pick your time to come out behind point to actually help out eventually. But uh, yeah, controlling water as a demo can be valuable. Um, and so can playing with your med to, to kite through spawn. They're both options. You can mix it up as you see fit. Um, what else? As far as a roamer goes, usually like lurking. Um, on like the pipes, you can peek launch pad, spot info. And this could be a pocket's job as well with like a roamer elsewhere. Um, the soldiers could be kind of interchangeable. But uh, it's important to, to know who's doing what at the very least. But uh, yeah, you could... You have multiple options. Your main objective is just survive the Uber, basically. 
so that you can bomb point if people try and cap it and like spam people out, bomb players that are out of position, just normal soldier things. So number one is like stay healthy and stay alive as the uber goes on, which isn't too bad because oftentimes like if you're back here, you're not too much of a target of it, but there's some times where you might be able to uh, actually push into lobby and spam players out and maybe not even get a kill but just damage them enough to where they don't get to commit in and suddenly like it's it's like a it's like a pseudo kill in a way where that guy is now not in the fight for long enough that uh the fight might turn in your favor so that can be valuable but uh, you definitely want to be available to bomb ring um because if they do pressure point you want a soldier on the ring or a soldier committing onto the point itself depending on uh, how much of a threat it is um, so yeah, being available for that, or you might, uh, be playing here, like, lurking around, Uber's ending, and their combo's, like, looking kind of spammable, or kind of vulnerable, I guess, like, they've eaten some spam, then you can, like, bomb into them. You just have options, um, but that's the basic sort of positioning. As a soldier, um, or as a, a pocket as well, or just soldier, because, again, they can be interchangeable, um... If your demo's not playing water, then having a soldier secret can be quite nice, just to help out uh, if players are trying to get behind uh, the point from water. Um, but yeah, soldiers and stickies are just the main way to stop the point from being capped, so keeping all those resources alive and well is important. Um, so we talked about the off classes scouts could play, we talked about demo and soldiers and medic. I think that's it for this add on last. Okay, there was a lot to talk about there. Um, of course, when we get to add on last, we're going to be retreading the same stuff. We can go a little faster. But uh, yeah, let us now talk about evens on last. <clears throat> so, if the objective of a disad sentry gun is to be constructed as fast as possible, and that's why you might put it near a spawn shutter, the objective of an evens gun is twofold number one you want it to watch some doorways and the sentry gun on gully wash actually or like the meta sentry gun spot doesn't really hold doors that great uh in that people can still peek them but they can't commit through them so it still locks down a lot of area because you can see this last is quite small so a sentry gun watches like a, almost the whole point um except actually the point itself ironically enough um, and then the secondary thing you want is you want it to deny bombs. So usually people construct the gun like in this area near this pole. Uh, sometimes I see it like on the left side of it. Sometimes I see it right here. I think right here is like totally fine. Um, and that's going to do everything of, okay, if they walk in shutter, the gun's going to shoot at them. If they commit out launch pad, the gun's probably going to shoot at them. Um, if they walk in river, the gun's going to shoot at them. So while it is actually spammable from river, like here, or in some cases from launch pad, like here, um, or even just like jiggle peeking shutter, um, it is spammable from those, those angles. It's still going to watch everything to some degree. So they can't just get in. And then your job just becomes like, okay, well, the guys holding the doors just need to spam out the people that are trying to spam so that they can't shoot the gun, which uh, is usually pretty manageable. So that's usually what you want your your gun to look like on evens. Um, as far as positioning for your combo, your meds going to want to be like around here generally. Um, and if you know they have a sniper, then you might want to even be like tucked away over here. Because again, this is not only a spam lane for soldiers, but a sniper could could jump on here. And if your med is there, then they can spot the med from here. Whereas if your med's over there, then they have to like commit out further, where they're more likely to just die. Um, so yeah, typically you have your demo with your combo um, in charge of primarily shutter, but also launch pad, and then pocket soldier. Same deal, just like on the pipes, just ready to like move around, help out whoever. Um, primarily in charge of launch pad first, and then Roamer is going to be watching River. But this will stretch and like move around, and the hold is malleable. Any evens hold should be kind of malleable on last, where all your spam classes need to coordinate to make sure all the doors are being held. 
So one such example could be your roamer is playing river. They pressure real river really hard. Your roamer has to go to spawn to resupply. As this like timing interval is happening, this door is no longer being held because the roamer is holding it and now they have to back up. So that slack needs to get picked up. So what do you do is have your pocket rotate over to just play exactly what your roamer was playing. And then your demo can make sure to watch both shutter and launch pad. And now while your roamer is getting healed up, everything is still getting watched again. So they don't have that good window of opportunity to like do more stuff basically. Um, which is important. You just want to make sure that their efforts are not, are not fruitful when you're on your, la your own last. Um, likewise, they might send a player behind water to go pressure the cap. Because, uh, again, that gun doesn't watch it. Cat pressure can be nice because it is kind of far from these doors, actually, that people are holding. Uh, anytime someone goes water with a threat to cap, you want to have a soldier on the ring. Whether this be your roamer or your pocket is up to them. But uh, it's quite important that they are here ready to deny that effort. And, again, this is a case where someone has to rotate off a door so the other person can pick up the slack. Um, but yeah, rotating doors, making sure everything's covered is a very important aspect of being an explosives class um, on a last hold. What else? Uh, sniper, I guess, could be played out of this last. I don't think it's too good. Um, pyro is also an option just to help deny spam even more. If you notice that uh, you're having a tough time holding those doors and your gun might be going down, um, totally an option to play pyro and just reflect that spam will make it much harder for the other team to do anything. Um, outside of that, though, just having a scout is totally fine as well. Um, and, yeah, I think that's it for the evens hold. Kind of covered everything. And this is for when the other team is sacking. So, once they do sack a guy, and this is the last people usually double sack into, then you get to play counter sack, where now you have an advantage of two picks, this is a hard last to push off of, so you're unlikely to be able to push out straight up off of two picks. But it does give you the opportunity to get aggressive, get some spam in, and then send your own sack to maybe get them to force. So then you have add and you get to push off your last. So the way counter sack looks is you usually want to leave your sentry gun alive because uh, most of the time the sack isn't going to get anything. Um, and you don't want to have to rebuild that gun. So you leave your NGN last. And then you have your demo go lobby. And they will be a lone lobby. So they have to be mindful of it. Um, yeah, there will usually be a lone lobby. So you have to be mindful. Um, I noticed I do trap baby door. And then trap shutter. I don't know how important that is actually. Because they should... There shouldn't be anyone... I mean, I guess it's important to clear wood. But you can like... That's nah, I'm getting too in the weeds. But basically, your demo is going to be lobby. Oftentimes, this shutter will be trapped. But if it's not, then you can get very valuable spam on the other team. Uh, who's going to likely be holding bats. And you can also just spot as well. Like, offer valuable information. Because if you notice the other team's, like, back. Uh, maybe even, like, towards choke. Then that's absolutely an indicator that, yes, your team actually can just push this point straight up. Um, even though based on just the numbers themselves, you wouldn't necessarily expect to because they're positioned so far back, they're giving you the option to. Um, so demo spotting, uh, shutter can get nice spam um, or can spot, but sometimes it's just gonna be trapped and you can't do anything. Whereas everyone else, so pocket scout, pocket soldier, and medic are gonna come river and spam them out and probably send your sack. So you're expecting them to be positioned here. Um, and Roamer could go multiple places. So a lot of the time you're going to come River with your combo, get that full buff, and then just bomb at them from River to try and get the force. Um, but you don't have to. You could come Lobby with your demo. And either Bomb from Shutter is an option. Um, or come baby door and bomb from baby door if you have a lot of time like if you were preempting this play then you might even be able to get behind on mid 
and they would really not expect you to be like high bombing behind them um, from choke. So that could be a very good sack, but uh, that's definitely timing dependent and won't be working. Like that's, I wouldn't be doing that too often. Um, what else about counter sack? So you have to be wary of exchanges because the other team should be more than happy to take an exchange here um, on a soldier because all they're doing it, like it's hard to their exchange has to be so bad for them to be giving up this positioning um, so as long as they're getting the force and like some damage alongside it it should be a fine exchange for them and all that's doing is buying time for their spawners to roll out and then suddenly like you had the ad advantage of those two picks and you had the advantage of going for the sack but then you were too forward and got forced into an exchange and now that advantage is gone basically um so that's something you have to be wary of but you can bait it out where you get aggressive enough to where they might think that the exchange is good and then once they use you just leave without using um and yeah that can be quite valuable um, yeah, so that's counter sack. Um, I think that's it for evens. Sack and counter sack. Um, so let's talk about pushing into second. So let's say you got a force. Let's say you baited out an exchange because you're a goat. And now you have add. So you do want to switch off engineer uh, this time. There's definitely... Well, we can talk briefly about... Uh, spy timings because this is a back capable last usually like through wood just it's it's fast for a spy to get from forward spawns to last basically so you have to worry about spy for sure um and basically the way you keep track of that is just like keep in mind the spawners so let's say they took an ad push into last um that didn't work for them they like lost a soldier immediately uh, as the push was happening, let's say like your demo had five sticks on the point, like a trap river, and they dead on the soldier. Got the pick there. They lost three, so they have to leave. And with those three picks, you want to push out because you now have add, and everyone's alive. So you may as well push out now. Well, let's say they lost like five. Let's say it was a catastrophe for them. So you do want to push out, but that soldier that died immediately, well, they spawned already. That should ring alarm bells in your head of like this could be a spy. Um, and to counteract the spy, you have two options. You could either just be fast enough that the spy is not effective, um, just by out capping before they can get in position, which isn't often going to be the case on gully wash. Another option is just, you leave a guy behind, usually a soldier. Um, you just leave them behind so that, uh, you don't get back capped. This does come with the downside of that's a player that is not in front. So, um, you have to, you know, weigh the pros and cons of uh how valuable it is there's going to be some times where like there's just no one alive so it really doesn't matter like you're going to get second anyway but there might be some times where it's quite important to have an extra guy in front um and that applies to back capping in general um if it doesn't have to be a spy there could just be someone like hiding water or hiding pipes or hiding in lockers or hiding secret there could be people hiding so you could clear that or you could be fast you could be spotting or you could just leave a guy um there's options for for counter acting that um in any case spy timing ramble over let's talk about pushing out of last and it's pretty similar positioning to counter sack actually where this time as a demo you really do want to have baby door trapped and shutter trapped and this basically just locks down lobby completely where the option they had of shoving a player behind baby door to back cap uh, that is no longer an option because this person is going to die um, and yeah they just can't really push lobby through either shutter and you're generally going to have your flank scout with you as a demo as well uh, there could be hiders lurking around trying to kill you so you have to be mindful of that but uh, yeah demo and flank scout playing together in lobby is going to do a lot to stop back caps from happening um and then combo is going to come river and 
and yeah just clear all the relevant stuff you need to clear when you're pushing out of a point ever so look out for snipers i guess uh but the big ones are going to be sniper or excuse me sticky traps and bombing soldiers um, there could be a lot of traps set up wherever so you have to be mindful of those spot those um and of course watch out for the soldier that could just be high bombing here um around the corner but basically you're establishing high ground for your combo um and yeah lobbies locked down from your demo and scout and as a demo you can sometimes commit out as well trap out choke keep them out secure the point should be pretty straightforward so oh another thing as well is it is important as a combo to clear traps on shutter if there's traps above shutter you can spot those you know and clear them so that your demo knows if it's safe and they're not just walking into a trap that's getting spotted from big door or whatever bs um so yeah another thing um okay so we pushed into second and we're officially off of last now so let us move on and talk about disad on second so disad on second is basically the same positioning that i've already talked about of demo and lobby usually Traps baby can be nice, just so you don't get, like, wrapped or something. But uh, you can have some decent traps up. Um, it can be tough to set up these traps because you're, like, very out of position um, while you do so. So a lot of the time you won't be able to get them up. But uh, they can be quite nice for the approach. Or even, like, traps and big door as well can be good. Um, just wherever. Uh, in any case, you're going to be playing by shutter, playing to leave lobby. Flank scout's going to be with you, and then your combo, of course, is going to be on bats. Um, this isn't a disad where you can get a lot of good spam in, usually, if they're coming choke. Um, so usually your go-to for the sack is honestly just the high bomb um, choke. If you can get a good timing, then uh, it can be quite nice. It's a very timing-dependent sack. Um, but that's a good option. And then if they come big door, then like they're kind of walking into you. It shouldn't be so hard to actually get a solid spam or a solid sack onto them. Um, so yeah, that's disad. And then just make sure everyone that is not sacking, so like everyone but the roamer, uh, is getting out and getting out alive so that you can play last. By which point, hopefully, Ubers have evened out. If not, then definitely play that disad. And if Ubers aren't evening out, you might even consider building the gun in advance. Um, could be worthwhile. <clears throat> so, that is disad on two. Let's talk about evens on two. And this is a hold that has two main options. So the kind of uh, pug option, like the, the lower level option is just a standard TF2 hold applied to gully watch, meaning you have your combo watch choke and you have your flank watch the flank, and the flank is big door in this case. So you'd have your demo choke, trapping up choke, spamming out choke, um, with your beam, healing your demo, pocket soldier here to help out or rotate over to help out the flank, just pocket soldier stuff. Um, and then pocket scout, you know, helping out as well. Choke, and then your flank's gonna be watching big door. Very easy to understand it's basically the same type of hold that you will do on many maps but it does come with a pretty noticeable downside in that big door is definitely pretty exploitable uh, if they rotate their heels big door then it's going to be very difficult to prevent them from getting a player behind through baby door and then from behind they can wrap around lobby they could even like peek out shutter and fight someone here or they can get to river they can they can get anywhere basically uh so that can be a real thorn to deal with um because it takes a while for your so unlike other holds where your demo can kind of rotate doors a little bit um it's pretty difficult to rotate doors in time here to prevent baby uh from getting shoved so yeah, that's definitely an exploitable weakness of this hold. But choke is kind of like on lock. They're not going to have a good time doing anything choke, really. Um, so it's an option. It's not unplayable. It's totally viable. But most teams actually uh, prefer to play their demo big door. 
at this point. So the benefit this offers is your demo can straight up just trap baby door and then trap up whatever else they want in big door. And now that play is like no longer an option. They have to like sit around in big door if they want to like bait this trap out or do anything where they're just going to be eating a ton of spam. And um, it makes the baby door play a lot harder to deal with or a lot harder to execute rather. Um, and the rotate combo to pressure big door is less effective as a result. Um, and your demo would just basically swap places with the roamer where it's now demo and flank scout playing big door. Um, and your demo can actually like sustain themselves off this pack and this ammo and on occasion catch a bow if they need to. Um, and then everyone else is going to be in the positions I've already talked about where like you have your medic healing players choke, both soldiers choke or to spam this out. Choke is not as held as it would be with like sticky traps in a full demo but uh it's still like such a small door that two soldiers are gonna do a solid job of locking it down um and then if their combo rotates big door then you can rotate your heels to support your demo spam them out um yeah sniper is another thing that teams can run into this point in which case uh it's all kind of the same, except Demo is going to have absolutely zero fun. This is like absolute hell of a hold playing big door against the sniper. Um, the only thing I have to note about that, other than like watch out about sight lines, is this is like one of the few holds in the game where as a Demo, you might be looking to take an aggressive exchange. Usually Demo is not a class that uh, benefits from aggressively exchanging with other teams. Usually it, you only exchange defensively on a demo uh, because he's like already caught in or something. But uh, this might be a, a case where you look for that uh, if their whole team is stacking big door to support a sniper. Something to consider. Um, yeah. I think that's it for the evens hold, at least when they're sacking. So counter sack is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can pressure choke. The pressure is not going to be great. Um, you can pressure big door as well. As a demo, you really don't want to be dying to traps big door, so be very cautious about uh, your pressure. And you could bomb a soldier choke, I guess, or uh, send them drop down and bomb them up from drop down. I guess you could maybe bomb them big door. But uh, yeah, kind of like scuffed counter sack. You're not going to get too much value, but uh, you might be able to get some. Okay, and that's going to be evens on second. Um, so let's talk about pushing out of second. So I'm going to say you have, well, <laughs> you have three doors to go through and they all can work. Um, if you're planning to just pop through and maybe catch players, then you're going to generally want to be going big door. Um, where your demo can bomb them choke and maybe catch players out. The big door bomb is nice just because it's like close to the doorway where they're expected to leave. And yeah, so if you want to play for the flip flop or play to catch them on like a fast rotation or something, then big door is definitely your friend. If you want to dry, then choke side and either choke or drop down both work. Um, of course, anytime you're, dr you're trying to dry, if the other team is caught or there's enough like picks caught to where the uber is worth it you should just take the uber um worth mentioning that applies to like every point but uh that might be the case here where like you commit to a dry choke and they're pretty forward they're like on point and you're still like trying to dry because the call was to dry no like the call should change to let's bomb them and kill them um just something to point out but um if you are getting through choke Remember the, the order of operations basically for getting, for, for drying or pushing into a point without using Uber is pocket soldier first, then pocket scout, then demo, then medic. So if you're going choke, then pocket soldier through drop down is quite nice because they can bomb up. And oftentimes a soldier will be holding close, holding to jump away because they can jump away. Just get that nice initial spam. This is going to be a lot of damage. And this is like the kind of guy that your pocket soldier is bombing to make space for your team. Um, and they can, at a cursory glance, spot any like obvious traps that might be up or positioning of the other team, stuff like that. 
just useful info. And then your pocket scout can get through once that space is made, and they do a much more thorough job of clearing traps um, that are much harder to clear. Wow, it is not often that this gets set like that perfectly. Usually there's like, yeah, something like that, but wow. Um, so yeah, pocket scout's going to do a much thorough job on the traps and also spot any bombers that might be trying to catch a timing and then demo can come through and then just shoot the things that demo can uh, looking forward basically and followed by medic of course on the flip side you have the option of bombing your soldier through choke and doing the same stuff but this time with your combo going drop down in which case you're generally gonna want to walk right sided I'd say and walk up your side um, if they like super leave you might be able to walk up their side but it's usually safer to walk up your side and it feels weird because you just took like a super long rotation just to end up on the other side of a doorway but uh, I don't know like if this is a doorway that they're all playing to spam out then the act of crossing through it might be a lot more difficult than the act of like going all the way around drop down can be very nice because a lot of teams aren't expecting it to happen um yeah i think that's it for pushing into mid um man i can feel my voice going i was gonna i thought of maybe even doing two maps but uh i'm definitely gonna need a glass of water if i do so now that we have mid let's talk about disad on mid and you pretty much just play to leave choke um, as a demo, it can be nice to trap choke, and there's just a lot of really good traps I was already showing, but, uh, I'll show some more that, uh, I guess could work. Yeah, that's actually kind of fine, I guess. Uh, and trapping point as well. You can trap big door. Um, you can trap, like, the side of big door. These can be, uh, quite sneaky as well. I I'm not gonna, like, go over every single figure it out. <laughs> I have a whole YouTube video on traps. You can go watch that. Um, in any case, um, your combo is going to be playing to leave choke and just not be caught to a big door bomb. Maybe get some decent spam if they enter choke. So when you send your sack, uh, it can be more successful. Um, you could, I guess, have the soldier on lamp for your sack. You could have a soldier lurking underneath for the sack, ready to bomb up or just wherever. Um, but generally... You do want a soldier close choke. This is probably going to be like your pocket, i.e. whatever soldier's not sacking, because they're going to lose some of their health by holding this door and then jumping away and living. Um, and they're not going to be healthy for a sack. So you want your soldier that is sacking to just like be healthy so their sack is more successful. Uh, probably flank scout spotting big door. If they start coming big door, don't be caught. But uh, you want the spot big door so you're not like caught off by caught off guard by something you didn't expect. Um, but yeah, just normal disad stuff. You want to get as much sp spam as you can and send your sack, uh, and leave. So, that is disad on mid. Now let's talk about counter sack on mid. The counter sack's not going to come first, but it is the closest thing to disad, so we're going to talk about it first. Um... And yeah, so you would expect to usually sack one player. Excuse me, there's going to be some times where you might try and hold down two. But that'd be pretty uncomfortable. Um, we're assuming that you've only lost one player. And basically, you want someone watching Big Door, which is usually going to be a flank scout if your roamer died. But it could be your roamer if your flank scout died. And yeah, watching it from the fence can be quite nice, a little high ground. Um, and then Demo and Pocket Soldier can lock down Choke. Um, if they're really hard pressuring Big Door, then you might want to rotate one of your spam classes over there. Um, could be Pocket Soldier, could be Demo, one of the two. And then Medic is going to be, you know, chilling out Choke, healing these players. And then Pocket Scout is actually going to be way back here to spot Dropdown. Um, because this is like one of their main options for counter sacking. So if you have the spot on it, then it's going to be way less effective. A lot of the time when a player gets spotted, they're just not even going to commit. But if they do, you have plenty of time to come back and like actually deny the bomb. Um, 
And it's actually fine to have your Ponky Scout all the way back here because it's not like a bomb is going to be coming from Big Door against a scout on high ground. Like, they're already there to deny it. And it's not like a, a good bomb is going to come from Choke because you have a Pocket Soldier and a Demo holding it. So, uh, yeah, your med's actually not super vulnerable um, when all the doors are actually being adequately held. And that's why the drop-down spot is, is worth going for. <clears throat> okay. So that is counter sack. Let's talk about sacking now. So this is what's usually going to happen first when everyone's alive. Your team has control of mid. Your team is the attacking team. And you want to make something happen because you want to avoid a round reset. You want to get the other team's medic to use their Uber. So you have add. You can take the point. Yada, yada, yada. So you have options. Basically, your options boil down to choke or big door. And then they can get more specific from there. Um, I'd recommend if their demo is playing choke, and you'll know this based on if you see stickies being fired choke and their demo playing choke. Um, usually your best bet is just default go big door. Rotate your beam over, in which case your pocket soldier is going to be holding choke. Um, but your heels and demo and pocket scout rotate over. And they're going to spam out the flank, and then you can get a player behind. Um, and from there, when you have the player behind, you can continue to pressure Big Door. Let's say their demo rotated. You want to rotate back Choke, pressure Choke. Now you have a guy behind that can, like, commit. Um, that's definitely an option. Another option is just pressuring Big Door but not getting the guy behind. Just pressuring it so that, uh, let's say in this case, um, you're, well, in this case you would be planning to sack Choke. So instead of just your pocket soldier choke, you have your your roamer there as well. Um, same deal, pressure big door. Only this time the pressure is to alleviate attention from choke, and then you bomb the med from choke. Uh, that's another option. Um, if their demo is big door, then that play still works. Like the same big door stuff I already mentioned still works. Uh, it's just going to be a little less effective. But if their demo is big door, then you have choke as an option or a more of an option. So some options here are um, we can bomb a soldier through to attract attention, like land rock or something. Actually, land rock with uh, demo peeking to help assist them, spam out the other team. Uh, that could be a play. Another play is uh, have both your soldiers peak choke. Well, one peaks choke with a full buff, just to spam off the players holding it while the other one is waiting with their 300 health. Now that those soldiers are spammed out, they can bomb in much cleaner with a really big buff. Um, just plays like that can all work. Just get creative with it. Um, and yeah. So yeah, choke or big door are kind of the, the main decision you have to make. And then from there you can do whatever. Um, and yeah, so let's say you get the force, and oh, another thing, I are, I did mention uh, sniper can be played into this point. Big door is kind of like the main way to peek the sniper, or really the only way to peek the sniper. Um, likewise, this is a decent point for spy as well, um, just because it's kind of like open. I don't know why spy is like used so much on this point, but uh, it can be quite nice. So. Um, yeah, I figured I'd just mention that. Um, now let's talk about pushing into mid. And yeah, let's start with something a little niche. Let's start with big door. So you can come big door with the intention of shoving behind baby door into lobby. And the benefit this has is keep in mind their positioning on this ad should be like bats. And if they don't have a good spot big door, then you might be able to wrap behind them and catch them out. Um, it also just has the benefit of just like cutting off everything basically. Because anything further forward than like there in river, anything further forward, including like lobby here, will be stuck behind the combo. So they're going to really want to get out. So it could be like a nice way to just like chomp off the entire point basically by wrapping behind. Um, and it can be in like a nice slim ad. Well, you don't want to be too slim because it takes some time to, to get to. But uh, it can be a nice a nice option. Um, likewise, you could 
potentially just dry big door entirely. You have to really worry about the spam and just a soldier waiting here to drop down and force you. Um, but I guess it is an option and they might be caught out and you could use. But uh, if you are planning to dry, the main door you want to do that through is choke. And this is like a really textbook dry door because it's very easy to bomb a soldier through to rock. From rock, they're pretty isolated from the other team. It's hard for a player to get on them. And you have a direct line of sight to choke. So if they do need to get bowed, then they can get bowed. And from here, you can spot all of the relevant threats like traps choke, a soldier above choke, or way above choke. Um, and on the bomb, you can spot if there's a sniper actively peeking the forward. If there is a sniper forwards, then you can then jump over and stuff that so your combo can get through. And then when your combo is getting through, all they're really looking for is that high bomb. That's just kind of what you're expecting. Um, as a demo, I like to trap off my medic once I know that bomb is coming, or just trap off wherever I expect the soldier to be landing. Um, and then, yeah, from there, it should be a pretty straightforward approach to the high ground. Um, and you do want to be on this high ground. You don't want to be, like, walking in the low ground to go, like, no, just play the high ground. High ground is very important. High ground will just win you fights that you shouldn't. Um, it's just always the best place to be. So you do want to take this weird route to get on high ground. The only case you wouldn't want to be doing this is if it's, like, very slim add, and you maybe want to take, like, a fast uber into last, and you want to, like, gun it through shutter to main. But we'll talk about that when we talk about pushing last. Um, yeah. If you do plan to dry through uh, into Gully second, which it's a pretty easy point to dry into. Um, not often the case that teams are caught. This isn't usually a point you want to flip-flop into, but I guess you you could. If their team is like on point, then they're caught to an Uber and you should take it. But like anything bats and beyond, <laughs> bed bats and beyond, uh, anything like bats or further, they should be, you know, pretty pretty out. Um, also, I mentioned the sniper in forwards. You have to worry about a sniper in the river as well. Uh, just another thing to point out there. Okay. So, now that you have pushed into second, let's talk about holding a second disad. Um, so, you basically just play choke. Um, this is, like, very straightforward. You play to leave choke. Um, you can just high bomb your soldier at them or do whatever to try and get the forest, maybe bomb from big door or something. Um, I will say definitely back cat potential here. If you notice that a team likes to push out with their demo river, i.e. their demo is not watching lobby, then absolutely consider shoving baby door as a play. Maybe have your flank shove behind or try and like shove behind a back cap, uh, that would be a very disruptive play for their push, because even if what you're doing doesn't work, as in it, like, doesn't get the back cap, it might draw people back, it might, like, just waste their time, even Uber, or make Ubers, like, more even, um, that's just, like, a very good play for when they don't have those traps, uh, on the shutters, uh, lobby's much more exploitable, uh, yeah, back cap potential in general is, is pretty strong on this map. But uh, yeah, generally just playing to leave choke. As a demo, there might be some times where you can just like trap the shutters and play to leave big door. Um, this is you know, totally an option as well because you can still just meet up with your combo. You're not caught to anything. So that is also an option. Um, yeah. Next, let's talk about evens on second. And we'll start off with counter sack. So this is a hold that you should be comfortable doing down to, because this is a last that you typically double sack into. Um, so your combo is gonna be, you know, in river, and you want to be spamming them out with your pocket soldier, and your pocket's got ready to shoot any bombers that might be coming from river, and your demo is gonna have traps shutter. And I also like to trap um, big door, just in case they roll out or they, the counter sack goes baby door and tries to bomb from big door. And you actually can, if you have time, get to point to spot baby door itself. Um, you are much more isolated from your heels, which is bad, especially if like their demo is able to peek shutter and maybe spam you. But you get that spot baby door, so 
if a guy tries to go behind and wrap around mid, you actually know, um, which will make it like basically, well, next to useless, um, because you like see it coming, and it really relies on like the element of surprise to work. Uh, so that can be an option if you have time, um, but you're you are more isolated there, and it's totally fine to just chill bats where you can actually get healed. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of waiting out for your spawners. And I already talked about like that exchange. If you do see a good exchange, then by all means take it. Uh, as long as you can get that force back, then it should be pretty decent for you. Um, so yeah, that's something to consider. Okay, now we talked about counter sack. Let's talk about sacking. Um, Gully Wash last is like one of the only lasts in the game where teams like don't even sack always and what i mean by this is they'll do something called pressure cooking where typically when you are pressuring well in sixes when you pressure for anything it's kind of a fluid or malleable thing and what i mean by this is you might get something more you might get something less it's all a matter of seeing what you get in the moment and then like playing to that uh what i mean by this is let's say you have like two picks into another team's last there's going to be some situations in which you like play the spam really well you play the positioning really well and you turn that into a round but there's going to be other times where that isn't the case in which case you might just get much better pressure than you would if all of them were alive but that's kind of it. And in that case, like you can just send your sack and move on and be happy that like your sack had much better pressure than it otherwise would have. Um, but that like super applies to Gully Wash Last, where you can kind of like it's almost like Jenga, where you just are trying to pull one piece after the other until the tower like comes down. So we'll start with like the what a good pressure cook positioning looks like. So usually roamer and river and flank scout could be river, could be lobby. It depends on where they'd want to be like sacking from because they could sack through main or they could sack through river or go behind water, all sorts of things. Um, combo in lobby and you're generally going to have your pocket soldier shutter to spam this out. And this is like actually somewhat of a peekable shutter. Um, I don't think it's as... Well, I know it's not as good as Metalworks, but can you actually... I bet these will hit me. Okay, yeah. Um, so it's not like perfectly peekable, but uh, you can bait the sticks a little bit. And then demo launch pad. Um, and then pocket scout could be... Well, ready to help out if someone gets shoved like launch pad, but uh, you can also spot main so you don't get wrapped. Um, but basically, what a pressure cook is, is like pressuring all these doorways at once, where your roamer is pressuring river, uh, your pocket soldier is pressuring shutter, and your demo is pressuring launch pad. Um, and this can get any number of things. First off, you can spam down a gun, which is like great. Um, suddenly, your sack's not going to get denied if you chose to just send it right there. Or you can just continue to pressure. Uh, maybe even take like a window to reheal and then repressure. Maybe you get like, let's say, 80 spam damage on the med. Fantastic. You could send your sack right there. You got the gun. You got the spam. That's looking great. But you might even want to get more. Because let's say you get that 80 spam damage on the medic. Maybe if people like have ammo still, maybe they're like healthy enough to keep spamming. By all means, continue to pressure. Maybe you get a spam force straight up. Like, that is not out of the realm of or realm of possibilities. But uh, maybe you just, like, weaken the pocket scout, let's say, in a more realistic case. Like, you weaken the pocket scout. In that case, like, by all means, you can just rip your double sack and be happy that, like, you have a very high percentage of getting that force. And then all that happened because you didn't know you were going to spam down the gun and you didn't know you were going to, like get spam on the med and the scout you didn't know that was going to happen when you were going into that play but that just like kind of happened with the pressure and you just play to it like get more and more advantage basically like if a pressure cook is going well against you as a defender it's going to feel like you're drowning almost where all these doors like it's just overwhelming you um and there's just only so much you can do 
So pressuring these doors can be quite nice. Likewise, you can throw in any number of plays. You can throw in a player behind point. As a demo, you can trap off the point um, or spam off the guy from ring so that if, let's say, your scout begins pressuring the point and I'm, an, uh, I'm the other team's, I'm the defending team scout, I see that point's getting capped. I immediately go down to stop it and I just die because I get dead on by sticks. Um, all these different ideas can be blended together to make a very malleable map or a very malleable like sack protocol, I guess, that really rewards like creativity being on your feet. Um, but it does all start with just like getting what you can. If you can't even get the gun down, then you might be in for a bad time. Um, and you might want to either work on your pressure cooks or just like straight up rip your double sack, maybe even spawn a sniper. I don't think, I mean, sniper into this last is not terrible. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I think a team that is good at pressuring into last should not need a sniper, should not need to slow down the game that much, and should have like very good success on their sacks. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my tirade about pressure cooking. This is not so much a map where it's like, oh yeah, you pressure these doorways and send a sack. Like, no, you might be able to win a round with point pressure without either team using uber like it happens uh it happens more on gully wash than like any other map combined so definitely uh i'm definitely an advocate of the pressure cooking and just kind of seeing what you can get in this last but uh if you're not coordinated with it then don't just sit around wasting a ton of time doing nothing like you want to move the get the ball rolling you might want to just go into like standard and let's just double sack bomber soldier river like scout run through main whatever type of deal you want to do as long as you aren't like wasting too much time and being valuable with the four minutes that you have in like the NA progressive rule set, we have four minutes per round. Um, yeah, as long as you're um, being valuable with that time, then, then you should be perfectly happy. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's say you did get the force. And now you have an add into last. So what ways would you push Gully last? Well, first and foremost, um, basically every Uber you take looks the same. And what I mean by this is, with the exception of like maybe some gimmick Uber through water behind point, which I guess you could do, and you could even like spawn a pyro to air blast people off point, but that's like a play you could try. But for basically every other Uber you ever take, it's gonna look the same where whatever door you want to get through you really want to be ending top right because of what i talked about on disad last top right is just so important and as a combo you want to get top right um well the uber flow chart that i talk about every map review number one if there's any picks that are caught you want to catch them before they're out um so let's say normal last hold setup they have a sentry gun there behind that wall and let's say their med is like there, which is looking very caught. By all means, you should prioritize catching that med um, before anything else. And regardless of whether you catch them or they get out, you move on to step two, which is like once those picks are dead or they're out, then you want to focus any sentry guns that uh, might exist. So as a demo, I can just lock sticky it or, you know, just burst it down take out that sentry and then you go on to step three which is on most maps a decision you have to make about how much remaining uber charge you have left you could either cross into the other team or stay on the side you used in on um usually crossing if you have enough uber left is the optimal play on most maps on gully wash you always want to be ending top right so that's not even a decision you are just looking to end your uber top right basically um, and as a demo, you want to be locking out the spawn so they can't re-enter. They are forced to funnel in this tiny little corridor. There might be a soldier lurking around, like I mentioned, that could bomb you. But uh, generally, you should be pretty comfy to end top right here. And then from there, you just reload, get ready for a recommit. You can bomb both soldiers when they're all caught there. Just sink them. Um, do whatever. Start playing the point. Um, all those good things will follow. Um... But yeah, basically, no matter what Uber you're trying to take, you're still looking for the same thing, and that's like ending top right. 
Uh, you still want to like catch those picks if they're caught. You still want to take out any guns, but uh, you definitely want to be ending top right. So, with that being said, what doors do you use through? Um, well, we can start by the example I mentioned of a fast transition on two, where you like dried in and it's slim ad, but you still want to take it. You, then by all means, in cases like that, same thing applies to like the one door in process, same type of Uber, where you want to be fast, you just bomb it through main, and boom, there's your Uber. Um, yeah, nothing special to say about this. This is just like your fast option for when you still want to play that Uber before it uh, becomes evens again. Or if it's just like a fast transition, maybe it is still like a lot of ad, but you just think you're going to be able to catch them out because they're like slow to rotate or something, then by all means you can rip it main. Um, for all other cases where things are slowed down a little bit, and you maybe have time to buff players, you have time to like spot last. This is actually a very spottable last as well, because as long as like someone exists to watch Launchpad, then it's very easy. I mean, watch out for traps, of course, but this will show you the hold, basically, everything you need to see. Um, so that can be quite valuable to identify like where they're at, maybe even like you see a pyro somewhere and you want to go the opposite door. Likewise, spotting river can be quite nice. But yeah, if you have time to spot, you have time to choose a door instead of just we need to get in now, then your main two options are going to be shutter and river. Um, they both kind of do the same thing. As I mentioned, all gully ubers are kind of looking for the same thing of like ending top right. Um, I would say usually as a default, people tend to prefer river which is weird to me because i think shutter is just kind of better um of course this can be trapped but you can just use before walking through and it doesn't cost you anything um but what i like about shutter is you are already top right so even if your uber isn't great like let's say you get half as much space with the uber as you expected you would be ending here which is still top right but if the same thing applied to river you would be ending here, which is not top right and like a much worse position to be ending. Um, excuse me. So you already have that high ground, which is what I really like about Shutter. Um, I like this a lot as like a default door. River's like totally fine, don't get me wrong, um, but there's a little bit more awkwardness to it. Um, I would recommend Shutter as for just like the default hold. Um, just the default door you want to use through is shutter. I would recommend if you identify a pyro holding either river or shutter, just you can just go to the other one um, so that uh, you hopefully don't get met by that pyro. Or you could go that door, but double scout instead of a demo and just try to immediately kill that pyro so that they can't like deny the positioning but still give you the pick. Um, Likewise, if there's maybe like a sentry, like let's say a gun pyro right side, you might be incentivized to take that river instead so that uh, your demo doesn't even bomb, but just like on the walk over is spamming out the gun and hopefully has a better job of taking it out than an uber shutter, which is like further away and kind of harder to, uh, to get the gun. Um, so yeah, against a sentry gun left side, river totally makes sense. But uh, again, they both kind of do the same thing. It's just like about the peculiarities of the hold that uh, makes you decide one or the other. And actually Launchpad, um, you really never see Launchpad um, Ubers. But as an off-meta Uber, I think it's totally fine. Um, you're just not going to get as spammed out. And this is actually a door that you sometimes can milk through. Like if a demo is trapping Launchpad on Disad, that means either you're going Launchpad too much, in which case stop it, or they're just like an insane psych psychic because this is never going to get trapped. Um, this is a door that oftentimes you can even milk through a little bit as like an off-meta option. Uh, I don't remember the last time I've gone Launchpad in like a serious setting, but uh, it can work for sure. Um, what else? Another thing, a quirk about the river uber is if you know their demo is water, then you can take your uber river and flash a player into water past the demo's traps to go kill them. Um, that can be very effective, uh, and killing a demo on this last is really, really nice. So that could totally be good. Um, 
What else? I did only talk about the combo positioning. Uh, Flank Scout could play water. They could play to like maybe even uh, follow the Uber or trail the Uber rather. They could play also. I don't even know where. I don't know. I'm so combo brained that I only think about what the combo is doing. But uh, having a soldier river, having a soldier launch pad ready to collapse on this uh, left side exit out of spawn is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and yeah, you could have a scout run behind water, or run through secret, or just run straight to point. Uh, a lot of people do like having scout immediately run to point during this uber. Um, not something that I've seen scouts do much on teams I've played. Usually if you can get this top left positioning, then you can just kind of nuke them when they're left, and usually the pushes work. But, uh, yeah, it can be an option. If their demo doesn't trap point, by all means, get a scout on there as fast as possible and punish that, because you can just win as they're kiting. Um, but yeah, I think that's a pretty exhaustive review of Gully. I cannot think of what else to talk about. Talked about... Yeah, that was pushing... Pushing last with Ad was the last thing on this coast to coast. So, there's no one in my chat to ask any questions. Um, yeah, I think that was very exhaustive with hour and 30 minutes. There's so much to talk about on Gully Wash. For me in particular, because this is one of my preferred maps, I guess. So I just like it a lot. But in any case, um, I will not keep things going any longer. Hopefully this was informative for anyone who may watch it in the future. And yeah, thank you all for watching.